Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Jeff Magniocola, CEO of Costa. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's a pleasure to be back. I was here in 2018 and talking a lot about the demographic dividend. You know, I think this theme is very, very fitting. We're in a period of disruption. And that disruption can create opportunities. That disruption can create threats. And I believe the difference between this change being an opportunity or a threat for India depends upon the degree to which individuals have access to digital education. And what I'd love to do is talk a little bit about how Coursera is seeing around the world a transformation in access to education and a transformation in access to job opportunities. I'll start here with the Sustainable Development Goals from the United Nations. It's a vision for what we want the world to become. And for me, one of these goals, SDG 4, sits above the others. Quality education. Quality education is the root cause of human progress. I believe that access to quality education will be the key to unlock all the opportunity that the last panel just talked about with respect to where the future of India lies. Today, only 41% of people who graduate from high school even start any college experience. You can see India is at 27%. There's been a bold and visionary plan to get this rate up to 50% by 2030, 2035, and access to digital education will be the key way to do that. And one of the gifts of COVID was actually laying the groundwork not only for online education, but also for remote work opportunities. And as Ravi said, generative AI, I believe, could be a great equalizing force and a differential advantage for the people of India. Here's a chart I'd like to show. It's the likelihood that certain jobs get automated these are the blue-collar jobs, people with lower wages, no formal education. Those are the jobs that historically have been the ones most at risk of automation. These blue bubbles here are college degrees, people who have higher wages, historically not very at risk due to automation. But generative AI is really changing this. According to the University of Pennsylvania and OpenAI, they found that about half of all jobs will have half of their job tasks exposed to GPT, and higher wage individuals will be more impacted by this technology. Here's a chart from McKinsey. If you're wondering, is this going to happen fast? Are companies going to adopt generative AI quickly? I believe the answer is yes, because of the economic potential that could be unlocked. Four trillion dollars, and if you want to know where, customer operations, software engineering, product R&D, sales, and marketing. If you zoom in to a recent report from ENY India, they say that by far the largest impact on India's sectors in terms of value creation from generative AI is in business services and financial services. This will be a reskilling opportunity like we've never seen before. This is a chart that Ravi actually alluded to. It's a study by uh, BCG and Harvard Business School they looked at task completion by BCG consultants without GPT and with GPT. A couple things I just want to point out. Number one, the average jumped up for the low performers by 43%. Number two, oh, and by the way, anyone saying maybe people won't really adopt this, if you are an above average performer in this study and you chose not to use GPT-4 to perform your tasks, you suddenly become way below average compared to the rest of the group that has shifted to the right. Another thing you find is that the distribution of performance has narrowed, so you have much higher ver uh, reliability of performance. And interestingly, the gap between the lower performers and the higher performers closed. And so this is why, borrowing from Robbie's recent comments in the uh, economic times, Gen AI could reshape the world and make it a far more uh, equal place. But in order for this to happen, people need access to education. That's going to be the key that unlocks all this. So now, a little bit on Coursera. 
We were founded in 2012 by a couple of Stanford professors. We've been around uh, for quite some time now. Our ecosystem basically includes about 300 university and industry partners who publish online content. It's made available to learners around the world, 140 million now. We also serve institutions with business, campus, and government services. If you zoom in and say, where are, the, are these learners? There's 23.4 million learners in India on Coursera. 100,000 learners shy of every country in Europe combined. And the number two country behind the United States in terms of number of learners growing faster. There will be more India, more learners on Coursera in India within a couple years than any other country in the world and all of Europe by far. Now, that's the learner side. The other thing that's happened since the last time I was here in 2018, 18 of the top universities in India are now publishing courses on Coursera, not only for learners in India, for learners all around the world. And it's not just universities, it's also some of the largest industry players coming in India now, playing on the global stage to not only import expert uh, uh, education, but to export it as well. We put on with uh, Bits Palani, uh, Bachelors of Computer Science is online, with uh, IIT Guwahati, a Bachelors of Data Science and AI with honors, and also a really great leadership training program from IIT Ahmedabad. I won't read through all the numbers, but what you can see is very wide distribution of access across metros, across cities, and far higher representation of women in these programs online compared to the same uh, degree program on campus. Now, what's going to be the impact of AI on education? I'll briefly go through this. So first of all, it's going to have a big impact on jobs. And because AI will have a big impact on jobs, it's going to have a big impact on education as well. The good news is, as AI creates a need for upskilling and reskilling, it will also dramatically change the effectiveness and the accessibility of education globally. So it will make learning far more effective. I'll show you how in a moment. It also allows people to create content at very high quality, at very low cost, uh, in a very short time to keep the content up to speed with how fast the world is changing. And then finally, it really increases accessibility. It used to cost us $10,000 to translate one course into one language. It now cost us $20. Today we translated 4,200 courses into 20 languages. I was here in Delhi just a few weeks ago, uh, the day after National Hindi Day, announcing that we translated virtually all of our courses into Hindi. So language will no longer be the obstacle for people accessing high quality education. In terms of what Coursera is doing, We've launched a Generative AI Academy. This helps businesses train all their people. I'll show you a little bit more about that in a sec. A Career Academy. A lot of people are going to have to reskill and redeploy into new jobs. We've launched something called Coach. This is a personal AI tutor that sits in the courses on Coursera. So someone taking a certificate program from IM Ahmedabad, they're learning from the experts at IM Ahmedabad but they're getting the tutor to actually give answers based on the expert professor's course. It's not just going out to the internet, it's grounding the answers in the expertise of the instructor. We are about to launch something called Course Builder. This will allow businesses and, and, and faculty on campuses create custom tailored courses using outside experts. And I just mentioned the machine translation. I am, I am proud to say that I just launched a course uh, that, that is on reskilling for, for uh, CEOs and leaders in generative AI. And I just want to wrap, I'm going to go through this. This is Coach basically giving you personalized tutoring in, uh, tutoring in course. Coach, by the way, speaks English. Coach speaks Hindi. Uh, not only is the course available in all languages, the tutoring is as well. I don't think I have time for that video, but I'll finish with a couple important statements. First of all, India is the main player in the field of AI talent. I believe that the key thing is going to be talent agility. How fast can the talent here 
move to seize these opportunities because I think other companies like Coursera are going to be looking to India as their future workforce. In 2024, two-thirds of every employee that we hire at Coursera is going to be here in India. Trust in AI will grow when its ethical, economic, and social aspects are addressed, and the fundamental unlock is going to be digital education and reskilling, and it's an honor for us to work with and to serve the people of India. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff.